Hi, ah, well, first of all, thanks for, for having us and uh, very great, uh, great to be here. Um, being part of CMA for Imarsat is, is very important and very relevant. Um, the main reason being that recent times have shown that digitalization and, and crew welfare uh, are major topics in the industry and American shipping companies are known to be at the forefront of innovation. So for us, it's very important to, on the one hand, showcase our solutions uh, to them, but on the other hand, also engage with them uh, and see what, what's, what's, what the key topics are in, uh, in, in their area of business so that we can make sure that our future solutions are designed to meet those needs. Yeah, well, shipping in general has been affected immensely by the by the pandemic. And I think more than anything else, the, the 1.6 million seafarers that we have out there transporting our goods every single day uh, have been affected the most. Um, not being able to, to have crew changes, staying on board for many months beyond, uh, beyond their original contract uh, uh, has been a very, very heavy burden on them. So, so the crew on one side. On the other side, also uh, for shipping companies, the limited availability to, to reach a vessel in person to do maintenance, to do IT systems upgrades, to do class surveys has proven to be a, a, bit, a really big challenge. Um, throughout the pandemic, we've seen an, an, an improvement in, in ports opening um, and general cases globally going down. But unfortunately, in recent times, we see that, that uh, ports in Asia PEC are, are closing again because of the pandemic. So the end is still not, not in sight, unfortunately. So uh, that, is, that has uh, definitely affected the industry as a whole. On the other hand, there is one positive uh, side that we see to it, and that is that because of the global growth in consumption, um, the actual daily rates for, 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 for most of the shipping companies and most of the vessels have increased uh, uh, quite well. So there is, uh, let's say, additional capex in the market to do investments uh, into the digitalization uh, uh, needs that are clearly there today. Well, in a number of ways. Uh, first of all, uh, it's very important to say that we are uniquely positioned as a satellite operator with our networks already designed for global mobility. So that gives us the, uh, let's say, the flexibility and the agility to respond really fast to these changing needs. So when the pandemic started, we've, we've launched a number of initiatives. So on the crew side, uh, many shipping companies have ordered a, a, a bigger pipe of bandwidth in order to accommodate, for example, video uh, calls to their families and their loved ones. Also, we have uh, initiated a number of uh, incentives for crew to be able to stay in contact with, with home. So we have uh, reduced chat card offerings and reduced fleet hotspot uh, uh, data internet connectivity um, incentives. Uh, uh, surrounding a number of holidays, public holidays, but also surrounding, for example, the day of the seafarer. So from that perspective, um, um, we support the seafarers in, into staying connected at home. Um, another thing that we did was a research report together with TTS. Uh, and this report is focused about a, uh, the, the seafarer for the year 2050. And it's called a fair future for the seafarer and that report shows a number of very interesting uh, 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 things so the role of the seafarer will change dramatically in coming times because of the fact that vessels will become more autonomous there will be less crew on board uh, and the 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 technology um uh, that they use on a day-to-day -day basis will will increase dramatically and this report really outlines what we as an industry should do to facilitate that seafarer of the future and make sure that it's still an appealing profession to, uh, uh, to be in. Well, in many ways, actually. So first of all, our Global Express KA band uh, network, which is the high speed component of Fleet Express, uh, is evolving. We have a, um, a fully funded roadmap to add an additional seven satellites uh, to the five we currently have uh, in space today to serve this uh, to serve this network. Um, each of those new satellites that will come will have more capacity than the current constellation combined. So imagine the the extra bandwidth, the extra speeds that this will bring uh, to our shipping community. Secondly, it will also add Arctic coverage um, uh, for with the satellites GX 10A and 10B that are scheduled to be launched in 2022-2023. 
Then we've had two very exciting announcements uh, over the summer period. The first one being Elera. Elera is our urban network, which is designed for mission critical communications, for IoT and for safety. And this network will evolve into a high speed network of 1.7 megabits per second. And it will also allow smaller form factor terminals to, to join the network, basically making it much more easy to access for, uh, for IoT applications. And the second announcement was Orchestra, which is our network of networks. What this means is today, Fleet Express for Maritime is a combination of the High Speed Global Express and the resilient Elbant network. This will be augmented by a 5G global network to uh, address hotspots um, um, uh, for, for low latency and high bandwidth needs as well as a targeted LEO constellation of approximately 150, 175 satellites uh, to address those hotspots where, uh, where 5G is, is not available. So that will mean that we have a multi-layered network uh, uh, comprising of five different networks serving the maritime industry globally uh, uh, once the network is, is, is fully ready.